Staves are the upright pieces. And uh, stakes, depending on the size of bucket or tub, you know, but average bucket takes about 20, depending on the width that they are, which uh, varies. But you got you to start out and have about 20. Look at that. On the side, I don't. I may have enough for two. I don't know. Uh, trim. Trim that off. We're going to take a little bit of that out of there. Nice. Do you have any preference over? Or the heartwood. I know you're kind of getting down into the heartwood. Prefer heart, but on cedar it will work either way. The bucket has to be kept wet. Any bucket has to be kept wet in order to be functional. Now once I've split it down to this, I'm going to go to the shaving bench and the draw knife and essentially work a piece like this to this stage right here, maybe a little wider. That to this with a draw knife. It didn't work. <laughs> Work my thickness from the other side. Get this side nice and flat and This particular piece would be great for the bottom piece, but I'm not making a bottom one, I'm making a stage, so I'm going to eliminate that white wood. The larger the tree, the larger the tree, the easier these are because if you split a large tree, a large block, these can be almost split just like that. If the tree is good enough, very little work on it. But if the tree is smaller, and then you get more of, a, of an angle on your on your bolt, and, okay. and thusly it, uh, it it requires a little bit more work. Okay. Let's just say, well, actually, I'm 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 there. Now we go to the jointer. I have to put a slight taper on that, and I have made my pattern here. Made my first stave and marked the pattern. All other staves have to have the same percentage of taper. They're not going to be the same width, but they have to have the same percentage of taper. So I make that one, I lay it there. These lines are parallel. These lines are parallel to this one. So I lay that one right there. And we're going to do that right here, right now. The jointer. I looked at that. Don't look too bad. So I'm going to. Actually, I can measure that now, I think. Let's see if that one's good. Just by simply laying this mark here where I said to the outside edge here and here and closing it up. Nope, I'll put just a little bit more on that one and I did nothing to that one. There, very little. <coughs> very little. And not too bad because I'm going to round over so I'm going to take a little off. Alright, now I'm going to go back and just double check my taper, see if I didn't lose anything. Looks pretty good. Pretty good. Somewhat. Now there's only two two areas of this bucket that has to be round. And that's the inside, or the outside rather, and on the inside at the bottom. It has to be round. I can measure a circle. I can determine the radius of a circle, but I cannot deal with an oval. I'm just rounding out some here to save me some work. Now I'm going to round it over out here to make a circle. Just by taking wood off the edge like this. 
had them in the tournament today, and the first person to finish that. Growth rings will run perpendicular to the face. Okay. And as you can see these growth rings. These are slightly off, but you want them straight up and down. They're as close as you can get. That makes a very, very stable wood. It uh, doesn't uh, warp and turn around as nearly as bad as the other. Another thing, too, uh, is that the wood has to compress somewhat when you put it together. It has to compress. When it goes together, it needs to compress. You need to be able to compress these woods. And it's easier to push this way than it is this way. Because this way you're going against the growth of it, which is the hard part. This way you're going into the softer wood and you can actually compress it. Matter of fact, for a final assembly, I will take this and run it over a surface like this. You're going to burnish it a little bit. Burnish it, kind of compress it. Okay. And then that will swell back. About there. So explain, these are, explain this again. Right, these are tools. These iron rings are tools. Steel is valuable and rare. And uh, uh, I will finish this bucket. And actually finish it, put it together using the iron. And when it's finished, the bottom end, everything is done. I will harvest the white oak tree, about eight inches in diameter, and I will quarter it. Then I'll, I'll work the growth ring and work out. Uh, I'll split about an uh, inch and a half wide, um, and roughly three sixteenths of an inch thick, and. I will make wooden hoops. Uh, I'll have I have one here. This is an arrow lock. Ah. Now, of course, this has been used or broke or whatever, but uh, that's long. And I determine the length of this by <laughs> physically wrapping it around the bucket, overlapping, and making a mark. The mark I make will be this point here and this point right here. That's where they come together. And then I will create the arrow and create the lock, and I will put it together. Wet and green. Wet and green. Of course, it's not going to be round. It's going to be kind of hoop, 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 hoop. Once I get it started over the bucket, then it will become round as the bucket is. And uh, now this is one of those things that I can make longer, but I can't make shorter. Here a little bit on the other side, that way you can go back and make an adjustment. Just by trimming it off here. Trimming. That's going to let it release. Okay. Let it release just a little bit of the time to where I get exactly where I want it. And that's called an arrow lock. Arrow lock. Arrow lock. Now, this has to be worked wet and green. Okay. Well, we're going to get some of that here. With, uh, there's a score. I remember I said later on I'll reach down in and drag out some wood if I don't want down okay. in there. I'll, I'll use that. I'll explain that later. And let me get some stuff out here. Ah, uh, yes. The most important stuff. All right. Okay. Now, we go to the bottom. Now, remember I said in the bottom I have to have a circle. I cannot measure it over. I have to have a circle. <clears throat> so I will actually use another hoop to lay it down there and maybe inscribe a line around it so that I can work the wood out to the line and I know I have a circle. Then I insert this, no bottom, mind you, then I insert this tool. It's called a crows, a C-R-O-Z-E. That's how I make the groove in the bucket to put the bottom in. Without Without the bottom being in there, I will simply use the top, use the bottom as a guide. Where I've trimmed off now, I've already trimmed it, and I'll just scratch this until I get my groove. I'll adjust this <coughs> out and as, as I need to. <coughs> I'll 
Oh. Anyway, after I make that, after I make that groove using the crows to the depth that I want, then I have to determine a radius. And I simply do that by this. I'll do the divider. And I will first guess about the depth of the crow and the crows right there. I'm gonna come out somewhere around the center. I'm just gonna guess. Alright? Guess. Then I'm gonna lock it up. Then I'm gonna pick a point here. I'm gonna start. Right there. Right there. Now, it's a starting point, that's gotta be the ending point also. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. I'm a little long. A little long. So I just simply adjust back one sixth of that distance as a guess. And I do it again. And again, if necessary. Until I end where I began. Then this lady, that becomes my radius. Okay? Equilateral triangle. And I will describe. Because I want these to, to, to go back the way that they are. In other words, I, if I have to use this many pieces, I will describe one across like so. I know that one goes right there. And I'll go up here and I'll make two marks. You're already, you need the mic? Two marks. And I'll go up here and I'll make three marks. Right. Now, then I'll pick a place where I want my center to be. Of course, I don't want it to be there, but uh, and then I'll draw my circle. Okay. okay. Then, I'll take my little bow saw. Before you is Marshall Gary. And we're going to do a demonstration of acquiring the musket. So, the arc. And you got a really thin blade in that, so it's almost like a coping saw. Okay. All right. Then what we're going to be doing is blank powder charges. I can always line them back up right here. See where I made my marks. After you cut it out, I'm going to take them line apart. the marks I'm up. Take them should have a circle. And I'll put it back together. The circle's going to be there. Right. It's going to be there. Then I'll taper the edges. So what you're relying on once this thing is together then is the wood swelling up from being That's wet exactly seal the bucket. Right. Okay. Exactly right. But I've still got to be pretty good. It wouldn't only swell so far. And uh, <clears throat> my, my work has to be good. Percussion and, and swelling takes up little pieces. So you told me that it takes a whole day to make a bucket. So in, in during the Civil War period, during the 1860s, what would a bucket like this have sold for? Cents maybe. Twenty five. I mean, cents. I, 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 I don't really know, but uh, okay. I'd estimate that uh, to be probable. U.S. dollars now, what would something like that sell for? At this point, well, uh, you'd have to get me down on the ground, strangling me to take a hundred and a half. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. You know, reasonable. I mean, a days, yep. days, wait. Fair days enough. Labor. Fair enough. Yeah, so, a lot of work. Yeah, there's a lot of work it in there.